hello everybody and welcome to episode number 10 of the Johnny Cast. And I cannot believe we're already at double digits. We're already at number 10. Probably should have happened a lot sooner and I want to take some accountability for that. I keep preaching all this consistency garbage and how I'm gonna I'm gonna be so consistent. There's gonna be all this bountiful content coming your way, and then I go and disappear for weeks on end. And partially, I mean, I think I did it to myself. And what I mean by that is if you've been watching, you know that I was saying how I was looking to do two live sports podcasts a week and then one regular Johnny cast a week. That's a lot because not only is that during the week, uh, the weekdays, but that's like three plus hours of recording a week on top of editing it. And then I have a job, a full-time job. I have the gym that I have to go to. I have other things that I'm attending to on top of other hobbies. And then one thing leads to another, and it's just it's just too much. When you try to do too much, you end up doing nothing. So that's kind of a little bit what happened. So now my my goal here is to simplify things and make it more streamlined so that at the end of the day, I can put out as much content as possible and make it as seamless as possible. So... What that schedule looks like, and this is on my Twitter feed, it's pinned to the top of my, my Twitter uh, profile, so if you want to take a look at it there, you can. If you want to get a pen and paper out like old school, you could do that as well. But what it is, is every single Sunday, we're going to have a Johnny Cast released. So Johnny Cast is going to be every single Sunday. Set your clock to it, I promise, and I, and I guess this is the last promise I have before I'm the boy who cried wolf, but I promise every single Sunday there'll be a new Johnny Cast coming your way. And then every single Tuesday, I will be releasing a sports podcast where we're going to review the prior weekend of sports, what had happened the week prior, and then obviously looking forward to the week of games that are coming up after Tuesday. So nice little uh, content schedule. Obviously, the days that aren't officially a release, so not Sunday or Monday, or excuse me, not Sunday or Tuesday, but every other day in between, I'll be posting clips of those two podcasts, whether it be TikTok or YouTube Shorts or just thumbnails in general. Which brings me to my next point, which I'm excited to tell you about, which is I had been fucking around with this app or whatever you want to call it, this this cloud, uh, this browser client uh, Photoshop thing called Canva, which is free, and it's awesome. I mean, I basically rebranded the entire podcast, was able to now make custom thumbnails for each YouTube clip and video that comes out. Every single podcast on the actual Apple Podcast app or Spotify is going to have a custom album artwork for it so looks a lot more legit all my social media is rebranded so take a look at it if you haven't also I'm doing intros now that you probably saw if you're watching this video on YouTube so really cool shit um and let's let's hop right into it because um I got a lot to talk about it's been a couple weeks a couple weeks ago um I went to Starbucks now if you know me you know I don't drink coffee so you might be asking yourself why would I be at Starbucks and the reason for that is I needed to pick up a gift card. So I go to a, a Starbucks that's close to where I live. And again, I'm not really familiar with how they work or how they operate in there. But uh, when I pull up, there's like 80 cars in the drive through line and there's no one in the store. So I figure, all right, I mean, it's going to take me two seconds to go in and out and get a gift card. So I walk in and there's like 20 employees and like two pe- two customers waiting. 20 employees. They're all under the age of 20. They're all like... I don't want to call them like emo, but they're all like kind of like alt looking. They're all having a high school hangout in there. So no one's doing any actual work. You got you got couples making out in one corner. I mean, I, I don't even know. People are showing each other TikToks in the other corner. I had one kid I remember was making himself a fucking sandwich like he's not on the clock. It was insane. And yet no one's helping the people who are waiting in the store. Everyone's, <clears throat> excuse me, focused on the drive through and then focused on just chit chatting about what happened last weekend. So I'm in there for what feels like an hour. Finally, I get my uh, gift card. I get it. It's all good and done. And when the girl hands me the gift card, I I say what I what I said to her, which I do once in a while, and I gotta cut it out because it's weird. I said like and exactly this. I said like, "Oh, thank you so much." I didn't say thanks, or I didn't say like, "Oh, thank you." I said, "Thank you so much." That's brutal. It's brutal and it's desperate. All right, that that just reeks vibes of desperation. Thank you so much. It's almost like the dynamic. It's like, what did I really need? Like, I'm sure the other person, whether it's a cashier at a clothing store or at like Costco or somewhere, when I say that to them, they're probably like, damn, like this kid's life is so shitty that like I just made his day by handing him the receipt. So I got to cut that out. And I've been doing a lot of analysis of things that I say that are good and bad. That's not a bad thing because I guess it's still nice. But. One thing I got to cut out is I was, this was very recently, this was a couple days ago, 
was uh, I was in the, I was in a parking lot and this car was doing like forty five miles an hour in the parking lot, just just literally smoking down the parking lot, right? And that's just utterly disrespectful, first of all, because God forbid a kid jumps out, God forbid someone's maybe like going to the gym or something and they have like their AirPods in and then they're looking at, they're fumbling around their wallet to find their membership key key thing. They're not looking and then you just mow them down. That person's unrecognizable. It's over. It's done. It's a closed casket wake. No one can can kind of say their, their final goodbyes. No one has any closure. It's a brutal way to go out. And it's all because this guy couldn't wait two seconds to do 20 miles an hour or even 10 miles an hour in the parking lot. So when I saw that this weekend or this week, whatever it was, this guy passed me, and as soon as the car passes me, I go, I shake my head, and I go, fucking asshole. And I do this from time to time as well, um, and I got to cut it out because normally it wouldn't be an issue, but I'm a huge pussy. So, like, God forbid, and this hasn't happened yet, but God forbid in one of these situations, that person has their window cracked, and they hear it, and not only do they hear it, they want to act on it, and they stop the car, or they go, they go in reverse, and they go like, what'd you just say? I think I'm just going to like turn around and run away or I don't know what I would do. I start shaking or something. And so I got to cut that out. And it wasn't like, I wasn't like fucking asshole. Like as the car's moving, it was more just like, I don't know. It was just me as the car moves, just like fucking scumbag, like saying that shit. And so it's just going to be one of those times where now it's not like a Toyota Yaris, but it's a, it's a Ram, whatever the fuck it's a Ford F-150 and it's it's Seth who's I don't know who's doing a, a, a trend cycle uh, and and he just runs out of his truck and goes like what'd you just say and then beats me to a pulp. So one of the things I was thinking about this, one of the things I can protect myself against with this, and this is this is shtick obviously, but um, I think I'm a bad boy now. I need to, I need to become a bad boy. I need to I need to try to have some edge externally where people are like, oh, so like they see me and they go like, oh, fuck, he just said that to me. I was going to say something, but maybe I won't. And that thing that I'm looking for here is a forearm tattoo. Now, I've been getting tattoos recently and um, I don't know. I, I think I'm pretty cool about it, which is brutal. I think like, I feel like subconsciously I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I have tattoos now, which is brutal. But None of them are, are visible when I have uh, clothes on, uh, one or like, T-shirts on. Um, it's inside my arm, and then it's on my thigh. But I'm looking to get one. And these aren't, by the way, these are not little ballpoint pen scribble on my... I hate when people are like, yeah, I like my tattoo. And it's a fucking... It's it's a fine line, one word in ballpoint pen on their like chest, and they think they got a tattoo or they whatever. I'm talking about like a bold lines fucking skull and a snake fucking American traditional black and gray jail tattoo on my fucking on the front of my forearm like a king. All right. So when I fucking say something and someone sees that I'm wearing a T-shirt, they go, oh, fuck. This kid knows like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or some shit. All right. So the bottom line here is that I think if I were to get that, it would it would be it would be a very, very big um, additive, I guess, for my for my street cred. But the issue is that it's a big leap. It's a big leap, and I've been thinking about it a lot. You get a tattoo on your sh- on your shoulder, your bicep, your chest, even on your thigh. You can wear shorts. You wear t-shirts. No one really knows shit, right? You wear polo. You're out classy dinner. Your polo. You get a, you get a form on your uh, you get a tattoo on your form. There's no hiding it. It's done. It's over. So I'm thinking about the things that I box myself out with, and I really can't think of many besides. What if I'm like 40 years old and I want to go golfing? And now I'm just like that scumbag on the golf course with a fucking like eagle on my arm. Like, I don't know. It just it just doesn't feel right. But I was talking to my friend who, who golfs a lot and and he's, he's really good at golf. And uh, he's like, dude, he kind of slapped some sense into me. He's like, dude, he's like, you don't even like golf. Like, when the fuck are you going to golf? You're not going to get this thing because like, because you, you want to be able to golf when you're 40? And it's true. It's true. When I hopefully in in due time become the entrepreneur of the gods, and uh, maybe it's maybe it's doing this full time. Imagine that. That'd be fucking nuts. But um, when, yeah, it shouldn't matter. So I think I'm gonna take the leap of faith, but it's gonna be a wild one. And um, I just think like, will I want it when I'm 55? Probably not. But I can't think that way. It's a moment in time. I'm enjoying myself, and I want it. So that uh, that that really is what it is now. 
Another quick, uh, I wanted to circle back to the car situation quickly because um, this is a, this is a funny one too. I don't know if it's because I got a heavy foot, and Johnny's been told that uh, that he has a heavy foot over the years, and and it, it is true. I, I do I do move, um, but um, maybe it's not just me. I mean, whenever I'm driving on, on the parkway, you you usually come in contact with two different types of races. The first race is like basically Subarus, Lexus, Infinities, Nissans, and they're doing like 100 miles an hour weaving in and out of traffic, like actually like genuinely racing each other on a public highway. And they're not in danger, but like all the people around them, like the mother of four who's like shaking because she sees some guy who's switching lanes with like a zero gap to, to fucking switch on. It, doing 90 miles an hour behind her, she might get like uncomfortable and trying to switch lanes, but he's trying to switch lanes and then boom, it's a, it's an accident. So safety first, kids. Stop with this fucking racing shit because it's crazy. It's really crazy. So you see those types of races on the road. Um, yeah, like just fast and furious crazy shit or what I find myself getting involved in quite some time, which is, and again, this could just be me. But, like, I'll be driving, and maybe it's, again, because I, I drive a little bit, like, I'll, I'll, I'll cut people off if I need to, and p- some people don't like that. And I notice sometimes people try to pass me. And if you're going to make it evident that you're trying to pass me, you're not going to pass me. So now it's going to turn into a four-mile race, basically, um, from wherever I was going or wherever I am to wherever I was trying to go. And the reason why this is funny is it could be any car. It could be uh, a Volkswagen Jetta, in this case, is what just recently happened to me. And this guy is, like, just being obnoxious trying to pass me. And he's not passing me. And now it's like as far up ahead as I get, obviously traffic always like kind of like slows you down. So then like out of nowhere, he'll just be right behind me again and then just trying to like swerve around me and shit. And so the reason why I'm even bringing this up is because there is a moment in time with all these races. So assuming you're in front and you have to be the first. So obviously one of the people has to get off because you're going somewhere. You're not going to just like stop what you were planning on doing and going, basically, and now just all of a sudden just keep racing until you 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 run out of gas. No. So there's going to be a time where one of those people has to now get off. And if you're at the front, if you're the, the first person and you have to get off, what always is going to happen, this happens like like without, without a doubt, is when you now get off into the right lane and now you get off onto the ramp, that guy will now get closest to you. He'll get in the right lane and speed past you as if like he won and that annoys me I'm not gonna lie that annoys me this happens all the time where now I'm getting off and it's like dude I have to do 20 miles an hour on this ramp there's people in front of me it's over I'm getting off I won it's done and now he's like somehow like thinking I think that he won because now he's like doing 90 past me that's just that makes me feel like shit because I'm like dude you lost and you know it and now you're gonna try to act like you won because you're still on the highway I got off. It's over. I won. So I'd like to know, drop a comment if you've ever gotten to, into one of these races because this happens to me all the time. So um, I've been talking a lot about cars, actually, the, this this podcast already. Jesus Christ. But last thing I'll say about cars is I'm always looking to get into new hobbies. Uh, I, I love that shit. I love shit that's interesting that I, I don't really know anything about and then getting really involved in it and really into it. And I recently saw on TikTok um, this guy like basically bought a used car, uh, like an older used car, and then like took it apart, like every single part, took it fully apart and put it all back together, made it really nice. And that's something that I would love to do because I don't know shit about cars, but I like cars and I don't know anything. So to be able to basically from scratch, take it all apart, then reinstall everything with like the right nice new shit, know where it's going and why it's going there, what it does, what's the better version, this or that make the interior nice, the exterior nice also. So my favorite, like, not vintage, not vintage at all, but 2001 is like the body type. It's like around that, that time frame. The, the BMW M3s from like the 2001 era is like my favorite body type ever of any car. Uh, it should, maybe it's because I guess when I was a kid kid, I was like five. And um, yeah, I just, I just love that shit. So uh, you know, I saw a TikTok video of this guy doing it with a with a Beamer, uh, and he took the fucking body off, and he wrapped it himself in, like, this off-white, like, bone-colored, matted, like, uh, wrap. He had, like, the whole blow-dry and everything. He's cutting the fucking, the, the, the wrap or whatever it is. It, it was sick, and, like, that would be a cool fucking thing to get into, and I think I might. I think maybe next car or, like, down the road, if I can get a second car, um, relatively soon, I would, I would a hundred percent do that. You get a nice fucking, I guess you need like an actual house for that, but like you get like a sick garage with a lift in it and you're just doing work on your car all the time. 
sick. Absolutely sick. Then I, I'm doing work. There's oil all over me, but I got my fucking tattoos on my fucking I'm a fucking beast. And no one's going to fuck with me, dude. You're not going to fuck with me if I made the car that I'm driving in and I have a fucking tattoo of a snake on my forearm. I mean, come on. Come on now. In black and gr- fucking bold lines. Can't laser that shit off. It's not coming off ever. So, um, yeah, that. I'm, I'm thinking of some other hobbies. Uh, another, oh, ooh, this is a good one, actually. I just recently found out what an Ironman race is. I always knew that an Ironman is a race, and I knew it was a triathlon, and I actually knew people who have completed them, believe it or not, that are older. Um, Never knew the severity of it and how incredible of a feat it is to actually do it. It is, and this this might be uh, news to people as well, it is a full two-and-a-half-mile swim, a full marathon, and then I think a 112-mile bike ride. All in a row, all boom in one shot, triathlon. When I first heard that, I mean, it made me think, first of all, I have a newfound respect for anyone I know who's done it because that's just an incredible feat. And second of all, that is a lifetime accomplishment that would like really be something else. I I really think that I'm building towards getting really great, like, like fucking athletic shape, not just like aesthetically, but like really actually in good cardio shape and all this stuff. And like involving myself in more like skill and outcome centered athletics rather than just like trying to lift and stuff to look good. That if I could do that before I'm like 33, like in my 30s, if I could, if I could, because I don't have time now for the next three or four years, but like in my like early, if, if I'm like 32 when I get that done, that would be like unbelievable. I could see myself. I, I couldn't imagine doing it. I mean, again, you're running a marathon after you swam a two and a half, I suck at swimming, two and a half miles, and then you're, fi- I think it's the marathon's in the middle, and then you're finishing off with a fucking 112 mile bike ride. That's basically bike ride from Manhattan to Montauk. I mean, it's crazy. Absolutely nuts. So, um, yeah, I think about when I was a kid, I knew, I knew a couple, like my, my family friends, two, two of like my uncles did it. Fucking crazy. And I remember like they would always, they would, they would always wear like their Under Armour when they would do it. Because they would be like in shitty conditions. That's another thing. It's like if you're if you're like 25 to like 30. That's I think that's a good demographic. I'd say Under Armour back then was the shit. Under Armour, it look like when you're playing like like football as a kid, or like like Pop Warner football, or like uh, just little league baseball. Those Under Armour. So Under Armour wasn't like this grandiose company that it is now, where it's like basically Nike. It was just the mock neck fucking like warm weather or cold weather fucking sweaters, whatever you want to call them. Stretchy and every other company that tried, to, I remember like Russell tried to like copy it and but people would just call them Under Armors. And it would match if you were like, let's say literally you, you were like, your team was like red, you get a red one. Your team was blue, you get a blue one. And it just felt as a kid because no one for travel ball like when you're a kid and it's like early spring, no, I don't care who you are, no one liked playing in like, 40 degree weather in early March and basically just like you hit a foul ball with those shitty metal bats and your hands are ringing for a year. No one liked playing in that cold, but when you put that Under Armour little mock neck thing on with the Under Armour symbol, you felt like you were just protected. You felt warm. You'd have that and then maybe like another long sleeve t-shirt and then your jersey or like a hoodie if it was really cold and you were set, you were good to go. Maybe one of the moms brought a little hot chocolate for the seventh inning or I guess, no, seventh inning was the game was over, I guess. So like in the, in the middle of the game or after the game, you get the hot chocolate. Maybe the hot dog stand was going, a couple of noodles. Under Armour had a had a place in in the culture and now it's just like, it, it is, it's just, it just is what it is. I mean, it just got normalized. But yeah, they, all they did was those mock necks. I remember I had, I had one that was like a special one that was even like, like more like for the cold and it was like it had like dragon scales on it it looked like it was all blue and it had like the stitching for the Under Armour symbol because it was embroidered on which was even cool honestly it looked cool it was like metallic looking and then it had like metallic silver fucking stitching and shit oh my god Under Armour just it, it, that's what it was all about when we were kids god, I miss that shit I do miss that shit Let's see. Uh, let's see what else I got to talk about. I know I wanted to talk about some fitness stuff. I don't want to bore everyone, but I, I do enjoy talking about um, kind of what I got going on right now. Let me just look at. Let me look at my notes for one second. All right. Yeah. So. So basically, let's make it short and simple. What I'm doing right now is I'm starting my cut uh, for the summer, I guess. But more so, I just want to. The, the reason I'm cutting now is because I want to get to a, a very lean body percent, body fat percentage, and then start to build up properly. Um, because I am. I'm not in a range I'd like to be. 
So I'll give you some quick context. Last three months from December to now, I've been bulking about 500 calories over in a surplus per day, um, still hitting cardio. Um, so I've gotten in pretty good shape and I've kept it in, in balance, so to speak. Um, but I'd say my, my body fat percentage is probably about 15, 16%. Um, so I definitely could use some, uh, I mean, it's, it, and, and my fat, uh, the way, the way my fucking body like holds my fat, it's all my tits. It's fucking nuts. I literally have tits. I thought I had gyno. It's not gyno. I just have like just fat deposits all over my chest and like my lower back, nothing in my legs. I got little fucking like. I was going to say, <laughs> I don't know what I can and can't say on this podcast yet, so I'm not going to get crazy with the with the words because maybe some people will take it the wrong way. But yeah, I have little fucking stick legs, even though I'm working them like a lot. Uh, and uh, I still, my abs are still visible, but I got tits and I got a fucking fat back. Brutal. Brutes Magoo. So anyway, um, so yeah, the split that I'm hitting um, during this this cut is the same and nothing changes. So basically, I'm hitting the push-pull legs. It's modified. So the push on Monday is going to be chest-focused. Um, then uh, pull on Tuesday. Wednesday is legs. Thursday is push again, but it's going to be shoulder-focused. A lot of laterals, a lot of rear delt movements. Um, Friday is going to be back and arms. So just to make this clear, the second uh, push does not have triceps involved in it and the... Uh, uh, the Friday uh, arms is going to have a back component. So it technically is like a pull day with arms. Uh, then Saturday, I do a light like ATG type day where I get a lot of range of motion work in, um, try to pump some blood into my quads and into my knees really, uh, do a lot of sled work. That's been going well. And um, and that's pretty much it. On top of that, I'm, I'm training for what's called the Murph. I think I've discussed it uh, before on this podcast, but I think it's uh, yeah Memorial Day weekend. So it's about a little over three months from now. It is a, uh, you can do it anywhere. It's not like an event. I don't think it's an event. I think you could do it anywhere. But it's basically, you have a 25-pound vest on at all times, and you run a mile. You do, after that mile, you do 100 pull-ups with that vest on, 200 push-ups with that vest on, 300 air squats, you guessed it, with the vest on, and then you end off with running another mile. The goal is to get it under 60 minutes. Um, I'm thinking I could do it, but I'm going to really start specifically training for it on top of my regular bodybuilding split. Um in two weeks when it's the actual three month mark, um, uh, three months from it mark. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and like I said, I, I'd like to get my, my body fat down to about 10, 11% before I start the pyramid back up. Um, I want to look healthy and lean, um, which is where I get to when I, when I diet correctly, um, which brings me to the diet. And this is just a complete and overall health optimization on top of cutting. When I cut, uh, in the past, it's a situation where um, I'm not doing much cardio. I'm just like in a really big calorie deficit. And a lot of the foods are like diet foods, which we all know are usually not great for you. A lot of artificial sweeteners, just horrible for health in general, um, bad for the gut, etc. So now, completely different approach. I'm doing cardio um, four times a week. Um, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, but I'm doing cardio four times a week on top of eating uh, 2,600 calories for the month of March, 2,400 calories for the month of April, and then we'll uh, kind of play it by ear from there. That Those calories are going to consist of pretty much literally all whole foods, all great sources of food. The macros are going to break down to about, like I think it's like 290 carb, 280 carb, uh, 180 protein, and about 80 to 90 fat. Um and I'm also going to be working in a lot of uh, fermented foods. I really want to work on my gut. I had been on the, under the assumption that me taking my once-a-day shelf-stable fucking probiotic was doing anything, when in reality, I think there's a lot of research that we're looking at now that, like, we don't really know what pill form probiotics are really doing for us. If they even are good, it's kind of a coin, it's kind of a coin flip. And then they're super expensive, and getting them from actual fermented foods is not only a sure bet, sure thing, but it's also just, like better and uh, cheaper and, and whatnot. So so sneaking some fermented foods in, a little kimchi, a little sauerkraut, and then slowly but surely adding in kombucha. Uh, a little hard to, to go uh, balls to the wall first because it'll, it'll screw your stomach up pretty bad. So i got to slowly ease them in. But when I do that, I'm hoping over the next couple months, I'll be able to really tolerate uh, a significant amount, fully heal the gut. As you know, I'm not going to go over it anymore, uh, or at, at least for the time being, but... um. I, I do not drink alcohol, so like that component of like kind of being a hypocrite, where I would always in the last eight years of my life like be really healthy, but then I was freaking getting blackout drunk twice a week. Uh, that component doesn't exist anymore. So now, when I'm actually doing these things for health, they're actually sustainable and they're actually kind of building on each uh, on itself. So uh, that's very exciting. 
Um, and with the uh, with the cardio, this 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 is a this is a funny one. So again, I, I run. The, it's gonna be four times a week, two runs a week, consisting of about three miles. I'm doing Maffetone method. Uh, I, I'm I don't throw in a lot of things that people who probably don't aren't aware of a lot of the things I'm say, talking about, but I'm doing Maffetone method, which to make it simple. When you run, you're not running for fucking like some type of like like ego pace. You're running really for uh, your heart rate zone to be in about 150 to 155, maybe 160 uh, zone, which has been pretty much proven to show if you can run at that type of heart rate for extended periods of time, you will get much faster than if you were just going balls to the wall every time you run, which kind of is counterintuitive, um, thinking that, okay, I could try less and be better and get better, but it actually is a fact. So those runs are going to be math runs, so lesser intensity. Um, and then the two other cardio sessions are going to be um, Peloton sessions. Usually 30 minutes I do, but I'm going to try to bump it up to 45 because when you work in a three-mile uh, three mile run, uh, it's less than like 400 calories burnt for the most part. And then those Peloton rides are about four to 500 um, with the 45-minute thing. So if I'm hitting... Again, four cardio sessions a week. Excuse me, a week. Uh, you're looking at basically about 200 calories off a day in burned calories for the week. So if I'm eating 2,600 calories, that'll bring me down to 24 net. And then in April, it'll bring me down to 22. And then I'll have to make some adjustments. All intents and purposes, uh, July I should be in great shape um, in terms of leanness and hopefully cardiovascular help health. Hopefully, I will keep a lot of the muscle that I have right now. Um, I usually lose it in my arms first, which is a complete bummer. Um, and uh, that's it. Also, about running. So, I use Strava on top of my Garmin Connect for from, from my watch, and it, it links to itself. And uh, Strava is pretty cool because, like, you can basically just follow your friends. Everyone knows this, but you follow your friends, and that's a cool component because it gives you a little motivation if you see maybe some of the people that you know run uh, doing more than you, then you go, fuck, man, I got to pick my shit up or or vice versa. Um, but I recently got the premium version because I get it for free through my work. And uh, would I pay for it if I didn't have it for free? Probably not. But it's really cool. I mean, it literally, if, if you if you do multiple runs over the, whenever, the history of you having the app, if you do multiple runs that are in the same basic route, it'll link all those runs up and then compare them against each other and show you how you're improving, how your fitness is improving, different little things. And it's, it's just awesome. And also, like, giving kudos on Strava is like heroin. It really is. When I give someone kudos, it's almost like I want to give the kudos so that they see, they're like, oh, like he gave me kudos. Not only is he cognizant of my goals, but now let me see what he's doing. And then they're like, oh, shit, he did that today. He's working hard. And then it's like reaffirmation for me. So kudos on Strava is a brilliant, brilliant concept. And I also hate to say this. Not in a superficial way, but like sometimes if I forget to like track my run, which is very rare, but I forget if, if I forget to track my run on my watch as I'm running, it doesn't feel the same as if like let's say let's let's just say I hit like a a PR and I, I know I hit the PR regardless, but one of those was a PR that I have record of on Strava. It feels a lot better. It just does. I, I hate to say it. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a little bit of the ego. Maybe it's just having some type of reference points. You can go back to it and say, oh, I did that instead of just being like kind of in your memory. But uh, Strava is fucking beautiful and they should bring the kudos feature to a lot of other shit because it's, it's fucking, it's great. Um, and now uh, last thing about um, diet and all this crazy shit. I'll try to be quick on this, is that, so I'm Catholic, I'm not like crazy religious whatsoever, um, to, to, to be honest with you, I've, I've really never give up anything for Lent, or even like, uh, don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent, all that crazy shit, but this year, I'm just, this has been a year for me of just like, I, maybe it's because I read Goggins books, or I don't know what it is, but I mean, this has been the year of me giving myself little challenges, and trying to like make shit harder for myself in a good way. So I said, you know what, like, I think some type of, like, thing to look forward to or, like, religion, whatever that even means, is good. Organized religions and a whole other argument, but, like, so I was like, all right, like, I'll go get my ashes for the first time in a while. So I went to go get my ashes, and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to give something up for Lent, fuck it. Uh, and I'm not going to eat meat on Fridays, and which I fucking, I forgot to do yesterday, today's Saturday, I forgot to, I, I ate, a, ate a chicken, here, uh, a sick Southwestern uh Chicken Cutlet Hero from from Dominic's Deli in Long Island, which is an, an incredible deli. Um, and I, after I ate it, 
I realized that it was Friday and I was pissed. But um, anyway... I decided to give up um, ice cream because during this bulk of mine that I had, obviously you could be a little looser in your diet, which is you really shouldn't be, but I was. And so every week, maybe once a week, I would have ice cream. Um, and recently over the last like month or so, I or two months, I discovered or rediscovered Carvel Flying Saucers, which are unbelievable. I'm an Italian ice guy, as probably everyone knows, but ice cream has been doing it and doing it big for me the last couple months. And Flying Saucers, you can get them custom made. I didn't know that at first. So then I was walking into Carvel getting a six pack of like soft serve mint ice cream in the chocolate cookie flying saucer thing with chocolate crunches on the outside. I was getting pistachio in there. I was getting it all. And um, between that and just eating ice cream in general, little Ben and Jerry's here and there, I said, you know what? That's something that I actually enjoy and that I need to cut out. So, and it would be a little difficult for me to cut out. So I said, fuck it. And I cut it out for Lent and I'm not, I'm not eating ice cream until Easter, I guess. So, and then obviously, uh, I'm already in this this new diet where I'm really drilled in, screwed in. So like, me cheating is not a uh, is not a um, not a really th- a thing after Easter either. So like, this should be smooth sailing, but it, it's been it's been a little difficult having to. Uh, they're in they're in my freezer and having to look at them once in a while. It, it sucks. But so um, the Carvel giving up for Lent, kind of a kind of a a, a tough move. Um, and uh, that's that's all I have to say on that front. That's all I have to say on that front. Now, each podcast, I'm going to be doing a positive review of something and a negative review of something. I think this is good. I think this is going to be a uh, a good little segment to have. Shows what I've been using that I like and what I maybe have tried or have used to use that I do no longer use because I don't like it or blah, blah, blah. And so we'll start with the positive first. And I know it's a lot of gym speak, a lot of gym talk, but I promise this is the, this is the last thing. So my positive review is of the Vivo Barefoot Primus Knit uh, trainer, right? That just recently came out a couple months ago. Now, little fun fact as well. I run barefoot. If you want to speak more about barefoot running and and how good it is for you or, or the, the pros or the cons or what, whatnot, leave a comment. But basically, um, and when I say barefoot, I don't mean physically barefoot. That's insane. I'm, that's literally nuts. I mean... I used to run in those like toe shoes, those Vibram or Vibram five fingers, they're called, which made me look like a total psychopath. And luckily, the last few months that I have been running, I've been in a suburban area. If I'm back in the city, which I will be rec- uh, soon, I can't be running around Manhattan or, or other part, other boroughs or some shit in, in frog shoes. It's just not going to happen. So anyway, uh, there was a hole in it from because it's like cloth. So I realized I needed a change. And uh, on top of that... In the gym, I've been wanting a zero drop kind of like stable trainer for. So I squat barefoot. I do pretty much my whole leg day is barefoot, uh, and I've been trying to just be in barefoot type shoes always. Wide toe box, a lot of toe splay. Uh, I have very flat feet, so I'm trying to build my arches up, and it's been working very well. Um, and so I bought these Vivo barefoots more so for the gym component, um, and I'll pull them up right now. So here they are. Right now, I'm a size 10, 10 and a half, even an 11 sometimes in, in like Adidas, uh, Nike as well. And these actually, believe it or not, are a size nine because they're, vi- they, 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 uh, run very, very big. Now look, they're fully like, uh, you could bend them fully, uh, awesome wide toe box. You feel like you're pretty much barefoot when you wear them. Um, super, super light. They conform to your foot. Uh, I love them. I absolutely love them for, uh, for squats. It's like I'm barefoot, very stable, amazing ground feel. Uh, anything else to do with like heavy lifts, great. Uh, no compression, obviously, because it's basically just a rubber sole on the on the ground. And then for running, they've replaced my uh, my Vibram or Vibram five fingers. I look like a regular human being. I could like literally go to the to shopping in these or wherever. I could be walking around in public and no one would even bat an eye. And they're super functional. Only con I would say is that they're a little expensive, right? They're like a, I think they're I think I bought them for like 170 bucks, which is a little little pricey, but. Definitely worth it. The only thing I can't report on, obviously, is the is the durability of them, which, I mean, they've been holding up pretty well. I've been running um, or just, I mean, I work out like six times a week in the gym and then cardio a couple times a week, uh, which is outside and concrete and grass and all types of shit, gravel. So, uh, so far, they've, they've held up very well and their customer service is great. So, that's my positive review. And now, uh, my negative review is... Uh, is is a funny one um, because <laughs> this is a direct one. This is like usually I'm going to be doing like big products and and corporations and shit. So like it doesn't. But this is a place that I I I, I live near 
that needs to be needs to be w- woken up. All right. So I I my negative review is on Crunch Fitness in Amityville, New York. Now I want to paint a picture for you. There are businesses, no matter what they are, and you probably know this in your town or where you live, where like stores keep coming and they keep going. For some reason, the building is cursed, right? Like it could be like a Five Guys is in, a Five Guys is in it, and then it comes out, and then like a, a Shake Shack goes in it, and then that goes out of business, and then uh, I don't even know. Name other like a uh, what's that called? Fucking Stack Burger, whatever the fuck they're called. Burger Fi comes in there, and then it goes out. So the same situation. This gym used to be a, a mom and pop gym, and it was taken care of horribly. Everything was fucking broken in it. Um, just it was just dirty. They would charge your card when they shouldn't have, and then it would take forever. It would be like a headache to get it reversed. Uh, everyone was snotty in there. It just sucked. And so they went out of business, as as you, you could assume would happen after years of, of doing just subpar business. And I didn't know what was going to come back, and I wasn't living in, in Long Island at that time, so I didn't really care. Now that uh, for the time being I'm living back in Long Island, it was kind of relevant to me. And so when I heard a couple years ago that uh, Crunch Fitness was taking over that spot, I said, oh, wow, this is going to be great. It's going to be a brand new situation, brand new equipment and franchise, big corporation. So good, good for them. Well... Not good for them because, granted, it's twenty dollars a month. So the the big caveat is that, like, okay, I'm not really paying for much, but this gym has two major issues. First of all, everything's broken again, and no one fixes shit. So like, it's so packed, it's so crowded because the Massapequa is a very, very large town, and uh, in Long Island, and uh, a lot of people, uh, especially now with this fucking TikTok gym culture garbage, everyone's bodybuilding now. Everyone's in the fucking gym taking their shirts off. Um, so there's a lot of people in the gym. Half the fucking pulleys are broken, so it makes it even harder uh, traffic-wise in the gym. But that's not really the issue. The issue is that I don't know who built the building, but and this never used to happen to the old building, so I don't know what they did, what Crunch did, but two specific types of weather will ruin your experience. The first is when it rains. Uh, actually, I'll go to the cold first. When it's freezing cold, which is basically the entire winter... The gym is freezing. There's no insulation. So, like, I feel like I'm going to snap my labrum when I'm, like, doing, like, a, a row because I, I just – or something. I just feel like I'm going to break my my ligaments and joints because it's sub-zero in there when I'm trying to be warm and, and, and working out and lifting heavy weight. And so that's an issue. But also, like, the mirrors fog up from the cold. So, like, the entire gym looks like Mr. Freeze came in with his fucking gun and just started spraying the walls with ice so that's a complete and utter joke. I feel like I'm going to break my knee on a hack squat. And then on top of that, which is way worse, when it rains, it's there's like holes in the roof. There, there's it's like, it's like the fucking, you ever go to Rainforest Cafe? It's like a fucking rainforest in the gym where forget about how unsafe it is when you're trying to like squat or something or like do a leg press and your fucking feet are sliding all around. But I was, I was like benching a couple days ago and I got a drop of water in my eye. Like I thought I had, I was having a stroke. I thought I went blind for a second and no, that usually, and this is how I'm not an architect here, but usually when you build a building, you focus on the foundation and then you want to fortify the roof so that in a new building, when it rains, not even heavily, that it, it, it can, it can take care of a little bit of water on the roof. Well, no crunch fitness in Amityville. Please do something about this. Fix this. Luckily, I'll be gone soon, so I'm not going to have to deal with this fucking gym anymore. But, like, I don't care if you're paying $20 or it's a fucking lifetime. You're paying $170. Fix these hazards because not only is the shit broken in the gym, but people are slipping and sliding in this gym, and it's it's raining in there. It's, 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 gr- it's disgusting. You go in. There's another thing about this gym. They put a sauna I guess because everyone now watches like fucking all these all these like Andrew Huberman fucking podcasts and shit, and they they want to be like optimal, even whatever, even though like they're taking like pro hormones when they're eighteen and like doing tests and shit. But so they put a fucking uh, a, uh, a sauna in the gym by by popular demand, and uh, the sauna clearly the bathroom wasn't built for the sauna. So now the bathroom, no matter what the weather is, it is just everything is wet in the whole gym. And because people obviously have dirt on their shoes, when they walk on the ground, it's like white tile. There's just brown mud all over the gym. And you want to talk about a brutal scenario. I went into the gym to take a, I went into the bathroom to take a piss really quick at the end of one of my workouts a couple weeks ago, maybe even a month ago. And I went to take my AirPods out for a second. And I don't even know why I went to do that and put them in the case. And when I did it, 
my AirPod fell out of my hand, and it is a brand new, the new AirPods, brand new, fell out of my ear and just fucking ate dirt, literally, mud, on this fucking disgusting, wet, condensating, f- condensation mud floor, it's disgusting, there's no showers in there really, so like, these people are getting in the sauna, they're sweating, and then they're getting in their cars, it's, it's fucking gross, I mean, Jesus Christ, so, poor review of the day, Crunch Fitness Amityville, I mean, I'll cut you. Listen, I'll fix that gym up in a second. Make me the manager, but like, pay me a lot. Like, I don't, I don't want to be the manager of that gym, but like, do something where I can like, also manage that gym, and I'll fix it up nice and nice. Maybe give me a, maybe give me a little split of the fucking money, the memberships that come in. I'm all for it. I'm fucking all for it. Let me, let me fix that gym up. All right, bud. All right, bud. Let me fix that gym up, bud. Uh, let me, let me go see what else I have in the notes. Um. All right. Now let's finally get off of all this health and fitness and diet shit and whatever. And so uh, I wanted to discuss that I was at a uh, I was at a party. When was I at a party? Uh, last Friday. Um, shout out Morgan! It's his twenty seventh birthday. I was at a party. Uh, it was a house party. And as a joke, like last month, my dad got me a six pack of those Heineken fucking uh, non alcoholic beers that I had actually heard good things about. But I was like, all right, bro, like I'm not fucking drinking. The I I'm, I just I'm not interested in drinking. Like it's not something to do with. I I need. I'm not a fucking alcoholic. But he bought them for me as a joke. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'll fucking bring them as, like, a novelty. So I bring a couple. And you'd be surprised. Like, when you're at a public, like, like when you're at a house party or just at a party in general, you need a drink in your hand. It is so weird if you don't have one. Like, if I didn't have that Heineken in my hand, it, I just would have felt so out of place. Like, just so awkward and weird. With the drink, at least you feel like you're part of the the, the cultural thing that's going on. So I'm drinking these beers, and by the way, they fucking taste like Heineken. I, I don't even like Heineken that much, but like for it to be a non-alcoholic beer and taste just like a Heineken, it's pretty fucking crazy. So kudos to fucking uh, like Strava. Kudos to fucking Heineken for um for Jesus for for making a really good non-alcoholic beer. That was crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, I was sucking those things down. I mean, you get you get pulled into small talk though when you're so when you're hanging out at a party and you're sober. And everyone else is like, well, there's two people. There's people who, like, are drinking, but they're not really that drunk either. And it's just, like, a little bit awkward. So, like, it's just awkward small talk, dude. It's just fucking, small talk is the fucking worst. And you're talking about shit that you don't care about and they don't care about. I was talking about, like, um, what the fuck was I talking about? This, this, this girl, this was crazy, dude. So I'm talking to this girl about, her husband was there, too. Her husband, it's, we're getting to this age now. People are fucking married. It's fucking nuts. And she's talking to me and someone, someone else. We're in like this circle. You know how it is like in, in these house parties now or these parties in general. Now like I'm getting to the age where people circle up, right? No one's really that fucked up anymore. Everyone's just circled up having small talk. And so we're circled up having the small talk. She's talking about her dog. And she has a fucking uh, a mini dachshund. Dachshund? I think, yeah, dachshund. I used to think it was dash hound. I was an idiot. Or maybe it was Dash. I don't know. But it, mini dachshund and how the fucking poor dog and everyone knows that Johnny's a dog guy. Uh, the poor dog keeps like herniating its disc and they can't really tell. But then they know because it doesn't jump on the bed or some fucking who cares. And so anyway, she kept saying like, oh, I have to rub his tummy to like make him feel better. And I laughed again. I'm having a no- I'm having a normal conversation. This is small talk, baby. I'm trying to fucking I'm trying to like make some small talk right now. I'm not drunk. I'm just trying to have a good time. Like there's nothing to talk about. I don't want to be awkward. So I'm like talking to this butter. And I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. It's so funny you call. I didn't say ridiculous. I was like, oh, it's so funny you call it a tummy. And she's like, well, what else would you call it? And I was just like, I was like, oh, I don't know, like a stomach. And she's like, well, I'm not like reaching inside his throat and like petting his actual stomach. And I'm just like, oh my god, this is fucking pulling teeth. And then she starts going on about, like, her friend fucking, her friend's husband doesn't make enough money. And then started, like, talking numbers. And I'm just like, like, then she keeps talking about this fucking dog and the herniated disc. It's like, we get it. Like, I'm a big dog guy. I'm not going to sit here and talk about my dogs all day. I have some type of self, like, awareness here. And then I felt so bad, like when you're in the small talk, I was with, I was talking, I was in the circle with someone else and I like had to bail. I was just like, I can't do this anymore. So I fucking like, oh, I'm going to like go to the bathroom or something. And then as I'm leaving, the other person that was in the circle with me, like saw me and knew what I was doing. And she was like, oh my God, you're leaving me. And I was just like, eh. and then I like left and then she just got stuck with the, 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 the brutal small talker for fucking, everyone's talking about shit they don't even like. Right, they're just talking about like I was talking to someone I hadn't seen from high, in 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 a while from high school. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking can't believe it's March. It hasn't snowed yet. That's what I said to the fucking guy. 
I said, I can't believe it's March. It hasn't snowed yet. I can't believe it's almost March. It hasn't snowed yet. This is what I came out of my mouth, dude. That's not who I am. That's not who I am, dude. This small talk shit is fucking nuts. But again, I'll repeat it for the 80th time. Nothing like a house party. Um, nothing like a fucking house party, okay? People are just playing fucking beer pong like we're 18 again. It's fucking awesome. A fucking house party. And then I think like, will it still have the same luster when like everyone's buying their houses and now you're going to like each other's houses? Probably not, but maybe. You never know, dude. The only thing that fucks everything up is the kids. When the kids start getting, when when, when babies start popping out, then it's, I think it's going to be brutal. I do. And, but it is what it is. Is what it is. All right, and now, uh, now that we've discussed the, I guess, the spirit of the house party, let's talk about the opposite of that, which is bottle service and getting tables at clubs. And I'm not talking about like once in a blue moon going for your girlfriend's birthday or for like a party for like a fucking big event. I'm talking about like consistent going to clubs and getting tables and bottle service and that whole shit. That is being part of that for a while and then now being away from it and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, that like portion of society is so embarrassing and it's such a, just a waste of money. It's like a joke. I mean, let's break it. Let's just break it down. Like you pregame for this, right? So you're with all the people you know and now you're going to go with all the people you know to just another place that they're going to charge you to stand in. And not only that, I mean, the girls aren't going to pay and it is what it is. Listen, it's just how it is. And so all the guys are paying like two, three hundred dollars a head. If you don't believe me, you don't live in like New York or LA or like like Miami or something. So now you're paying two, three hundred dollars a head to go to this fucking thing to just be with the same people you were with, okay? Uh, and yeah, sure you can bring girls up to the section. That's it's all fun. But the point is, is that now you got to order the bottles and let's keep, let's keep it real. I mean, you're paying a thousand percent markup on these bottles. You're buying a bottle of Tito's for a thousand dollars. It's like a slap in the face. Like what, what is the reason for the markup? It doesn't make any sense. So now you buy these bottles that are, it's just ridiculous. And I understand it's part of the tab, but then you go over the tab and now you're paying more than just $300 a head. And so they bring out the fucking bottle and all the people who like are buying into this garbage think it's so special. They come out with sparklers. Oh my God. Now people are like, it's so weird. People are obsessed with these fucking things. Like, they're putting them in their mouth. Selfies. Oh, my God. This is so cool. Holy shit. I have a fucking sign with my name on it coming out to my section. It's like such a weird thing. They bring it out. Sure, the bottle girls are very hot. But you always have that friend who thinks like, who thinks he has like a shot with one of them. It's like, dude, this is a service industry girl. Like, she's obviously just being nice to you because we're this is her job. Now, like, they're pouring you the drinks. So, you have to wait for the fucking alcohol to come out that they charged you 10,000 million percent for and basically when when they come out there pouring you the drinks you can't hear shit so now you're like yelling to the girl like cranberry or like pineapple whatever you're yelling to her she might mishear you she's pouring the drink it's either too strong or too soft too whatever too light too weak I guess is the is the term now you're standing there with, it's just it's just it's just a joke and you're doing this over and over again you're paying so much money you're wasting your time and the bottom line is this would all be water under the bridge if it actually was fun. But it's not anything different than just going to a bar and standing in an area with your friends and then meeting other people at that bar. It, there's no difference. So, and I'm not judging anyone, but like it's just ridiculous like to, to just like keep throwing money away at this stupid like social concept and it's those people who are doing it and then the other people who are doing it, which is hysterical, is like the, 40, the 38 to like 45 year old guys who are like partially balding and like really rich off of some shit or like crypto or something. I don't even know. And I mean, besides their age and seeing that they look a little older, the way you could pick them out like a sore thumb at any club you're at is they are, they have a uniform. They're all wearing sports jackets, like blazers. Like it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Like if you want to go to a club, you're going to see those creeps in blazers at one section. And then you're going to see like the group of girls who like don't really have anywhere to go. And they're not getting invited to any sections. And then they're just like, oh, and then they just wind up in that section and it's just cringy as fuck. So, I mean, that that whole, like, that's like the dregs of society in terms of, of like, I don't even know. It's, 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 it's scary. It's scary. That's that's all I got to say about the, the club situation. Um, and I know we're sliding down this slippery slope of negativity that I, that I like to complain about a lot. Um, but, I mean, let's keep it riding here. I saw a TikTok a couple days ago, which fucking annoyed me. It might have been, yeah, a couple days ago. We can't enjoy music anymore. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> I'm talking about live music. So uh, I'm a big music guy, obviously, and 
we've known this for a while that you go to a concert, everyone has their phone out. I've never been this guy. And I'm not trying to be on my high horse here. You can take your phone out and fucking, if you really want to like have this as a memory, this one song or this or that, sure. But the people who are just going to concerts and they're just watching an entire concert through their phone, I have nothing else to say, but I just feel bad for you because you're not only missing out on the experience, but you're never going to, let's break this news to you. You're never watching that video ever again. I want it, I want someone to comment back to me when they've ever rewatched a video from a concert they were at besides the day after showing your friend or having it on your fucking Instagram story. It doesn't happen. So having to rewatch or having to, excuse me, having to see basically all these people just having their phones out and not being present in the moment for these concerts. And it gets even worse because the TikTok I saw is, it's a fucking, it's at a club. It's like a house show. I think it might've been like, uh, what's his name? Um, John Summit. And it's just everyone there is just, their fucking hand is out. And they're just flesh in his eye, in his face, in his eye, just recording him fucking change tracks and do transitions. What are you recording? I, like, the only thing I can think of <clears throat> is like, if like you're recording an entire set of like Billy Joel, his last time he plays like, like, I don't know, the garden or something, or you're, you're playing, you're, you're playing like a crazy, maybe, um, you, you go to a Drake concert and like, he brings out the weekend for the first time in forever. And you didn't even know that. And then you're like, I got to get this on video now. Yeah. You don't really get to experience it, but like in live, but okay. You wanted the video of it. You're still not going to watch it, but it, it's sort of okay. But now you're recording a fucking video of a guy mixing tracks on a turntable and you're recording it as if like you're not only blown away, but like, yeah, it's just, it's just really, <clears throat> it's sad. I feel bad for the performers. I feel bad for guys like, like, uh, the DJ who was playing at, at like the boiler room set I was watching, or obviously like real musicians who were like playing live music that no one is, is with them anymore. It's all just like people's phones they're looking at. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. Um, and I think we should we should really take a we should really try to make a step to uh, to starting to put the phone down and just enjoy what you're seeing. There's been so many concerts that I've been to that uh, I don't have videos of, unfortunately, and it is what it is. But I don't really think I just the memories of them are better than probably me watching them over and not having experienced it in the first place. So that's another reason why comedy shows, for the most part, are incredible <clears throat> because. You have to put your phone away. You can't. You can't record. So it's all present. It's all live. It's amazing. So that's my huge gripe about the music industry right now in terms of live music and concerts. And hopefully it changes. All right. Now also I wanted to do, and I'm, I'm going to hopefully be consistent with this. I'm going to try to do a besides the the good and bad review of the week. I'm going to also do a I guess like a music recommendation of of the week. And so I'll give you mine right now, which is is I'll, I'll I'll shoot straight. It's 16 Stone by Bush. Now I mentioned Bush last week or a couple episodes ago when I was talking about how I'm fed up and sick of like TikTok pushing grunge now and how all these fucking people who just learned about what grunge even was two months ago and I think they're experts on the topic. They don't really know anything about the genre and only it seems like TikTok is very Alice in Chains heavy. Which yeah, they're a great band. But there's so much more to be explored and a lot of talent that's, in my opinion, better than Lane. And um, if you want if you want a real raw fucking grunge sound from the 90s, which honestly is even more unique because it's not an American band, it's not a Seattle-based band, it just brings a fucking different sound with that a little bit of a, of a like an English twang to it. Uh, I'm thinking about, so front to back, it's great. Everything Zen starts it off. It's a big song. I don't know if the the average listener would know would know it off the top of their head, but there's huge hits on it. I mean, Machine Head. A lot of people know because it's like very commonly used in like sporting events. The main riff, um, Glycerine, is probably their biggest hit in the current. That's what's funny is like you have the hit of the moment, and then you have like the ripple effect hit. So like Glycerine, I believe was like their biggest hit when it was like when they were it in the '90s, and now it's like kind of gotten forgotten about be, uh, by like. A lot of different songs are theirs, but so many great songs. My favorite song personally in the album is one of the bigger songs on the album, which is Come Down. Um, but I mean, literally every track has something to offer. And if you're someone who doesn't, it, it doesn't matter if you like rock or if you like grunge or you don't like music or you like music, good music is good art is, is, is respectable and should be like, be able to be like listened to and enjoyed. And I think that a lot of people who either are very narrow minded in music or just I guess don't like music their issue is that they don't listen to things enough music is this beautiful thing that has layers that 
artists that you love, you respect them for their creativity and what they bring to the to the art. So sometimes when you listen to an album, especially maybe from a band you like or an artist you like, and it's a little bit different, you might be turned off at first. You have to keep peeling that onion back, and then usually, if it's a good project, you're going to not only form an appreciation for that, you're going to love the album. You're gonna you're gonna think it's great. So give this album a run, no matter what music you like, and. If you don't love it on the first time, listen to it maybe three to four times over the next week. And maybe that third listen, there's one song, there's one little thing that you you really pick up on that you love. And then all of a sudden, you fall in love with that song. You listen to that song for a while, and you're like, all right, maybe I do like this band a little bit. And then you give another song a try. You give it a third song a try. And then there's another thing in that song you like. And then all of a sudden, the album, you're like, oh, wow, I get them now. I understand them now. And then the band you like and the whole thing, and it's a ripple effect. So that's, that's my advice. That's, that's Johnny's advice in regards to being being a little bit more open minded when it comes to full full projects. We're in a very song happy, single happy society as we know with the streams. But clearly for the last ever, besides the last ten years or seven years, it wasn't all about streams. So artists were making albums that were cohesive and were one thought or one theme or there was just different ebbs and flows to the album. Now it's all just short, straight, heavy hitters to try to bump the streams up. So give albums full listens through. You'd be surprised at how much shit you pick up on when you listen to songs more often um, and how much things you appreciate and how things grow on you. And I'll give you a prime example. So, and this is funny because I'm going from like Bush to uh, Yeet. But <clears throat> but basically, I'm a huge Yeet fan. I've been so from the beginning. I mean, I'm never, not from the beginning, not uh, since like 4L. Um, but like, it used to just be me and the 14-year-olds on TikTok. Now he's getting a lot of mainstream praise, and it's awesome to see. I mean, he had the Drake cosign a minute ago with um, with Get Busy, and uh, that was the first song that like really got me. It's still one of his best songs, I think. But the guy's been on an absolute just, I mean, assassination spree from 4L to Up To Me, I think that's the order, right? and he had the EP in between, but then Up To Me, right, then you bang right into uh, into Two Alive, which is like my shit, my shit, uh, and then I thought life was good, and Afterlife, very experimental, and I didn't, again, when you're listening to an artist, you might not get it at first, but you have to give them a chance, you have to give them a shot. Afterlife was a little weird to me at first, and I didn't really get what he was trying to do. And then after a couple of listens, I think it, it's not his best project. I think Up to Me is still his best. This is a fucking amazing, amazing project, and he is a fucking stud. Eleven and a half million Spotify listeners. He's only growing. I just probably can't go to a concert because it's like fucking embarrassing. But like, Yeet is a fucking king, and you might not think someone like myself would like a guy like Yeet, but I do. All right. So, favorite tracks on the album. Hardest track on the album, honestly. Forget about Split because it's everyone like Split, but Slam is is probably my favorite hard track. Um, but um, oh, there's so many good tracks. I love the outro is incredible. Um, Back Home is amazing. Uh, intro is good. Um, hmm, what else do I what else do I like? Uh, yeah, there's just there's just so many tracks on that album too. So I would check that out as well. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. Um. This was episode 10 of uh, of the Johnny cast. I apologize for a little bit of my rambling on uh, all the fitness shit. It's going to be a lot more regular stuff talked about in the next uh, couple episodes, being that every single Sunday now I'm going to be releasing it. On top of that, very, very soon, you'll be seeing a sports podcast on Tuesday. A lot of stuff to talk about, whether it be baseball in general or specifically the Yankees and Mets. Uh, basketball is coming to a head. You have the tournament coming up very soon. Um, great game against Alabama and Texas A&M today in college basketball. Um, NBA is rearing to a head. John Morant's a fucking moron with the gun. Um, a lot of lot of action with the Knicks. I mean, they're they're just so fun to watch now. That 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 Randall buzzer beater, if you want to call it a buzzer beater, was fucking cool to watch. Um, although he just cannot be the guy to to be handling the ball at the end of a game. I mean, it's got to be Jalen Brunson. It can't be. It just can't be. Uh, Randall should be a guy who, who pops, pop little jumper if he if he has it. Do not give him the ball to handle in, in crunch time. He has no handle. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, but Knicks, you got that. Um, maybe some. Hopefully, in the next. I mean, you never know. In the next day or so, might have some some Derek Carr, Aaron, or, uh, Aaron Rodgers talk. Um, and I think that's it on the sports front. Um, a lot of the changing rules in baseball. A lot of stuff to talk about. So we got hockey. Patty Kane, a trade to the Rangers. Um, so looking forward to that on Tuesday. But Johnny Kiss is going to sign out. And uh, a lot of consistency to come. Believe this. A lot of consistency to come. Cheers.